This week on Personally Speaking, my guest is the great actor Ted McGinley. Please stay with us. Hello and welcome to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and actor Ted McGinley joins me now. Ted can currently uh, be seen alongside Harrison Ford and Jason Segel in the Apple TV series Shrinking. He's also best known for his portrayal of the Bundy's neighbor Jefferson Darcy for seven seasons on the hit series Married with Children, and as Stan Gable in Revenge of the Nerds, the films. His extensive television credits include The West Wing, Dynasty, and The Love Boat. On the silver screen, Ted's appeared with Ben Affleck in the blockbuster Pearl Harbor and with Roy Scheider in the thrill of Daybreak. This spring, Ted will be starring in the faith-based family drama The Baxters, opposite Roma Downey on Amazon Prime. Ted is married to his wife, Gigi Rice, for over 30 years, and together they're the parents of two adult sons, Bo and Quinn. He's here to talk with us today about his life, his career, his faith, his family, and why making faith-based films is so important to him. Joining me now, I'm so pleased to welcome to Personally Speaking, actor Ted McGinley. Ted McGinley, thanks for coming on Personally Speaking. Let me uh, begin by saying that uh, for our listeners and watchers around the world, there's something called The Baxters. I want people to go to Amazon Prime and, and get a handle on. Karen Kingsbury has been our guest, and Roman Downey's been our guest. And happily, this upcoming film, The Baxters, is also starring our guest now, Ted McGinley. Ted, tell us about The Baxters. When can we see it, and what's it all about? Well, thank you, my senior. And the Baxters is actually a series. Uh, Roma Downey purchased the series of books by the great Karen Kingsbury who has sold like 200 million copies of her books. So there's an odd, uh, and Roma wisely uh, bought the, the, the books, the rights to the books. So we made a, a series. We have about 34 maybe episodes, 34, 36, that will drop March 28th. Okay. And it's going to be um, on Prime Video. And it's going to be a it's a story about a family, a very faithful, tight family that is dealing with difficult things uh, that we all deal with in in our lives and how a faith based family would um, how they come together, how they pray, how they deal with what's in front of them. And I've done a lot of uh, faith based films. Yes. And anything I've ever done there's no skirting the reality of what these people are dealing with. There, there's very difficult issues in this series. And I, <clears throat> for some people, quite frankly, it might be too much, mm-hmm. uh, but it's real. And there, and <clears throat> when you see how they are able to come together. Uh, well, I'm beautiful. looking forward to seeing that the Baxters on Amazon <clears throat> prime, a uh, 10 McGidley is starring in it. Ted, let's go back a bit, even before this great, wonderful acting career that you've had. Um, uh, back when you were raised, when you were a kid, I'm always impressed by the family of origin and its impact on all of us. So when you were Theodore Martin McGinley, way back in the day, um, the people who raised I you- I still am me, to my friends. By that's way. right. Okay. Tell yeah. me about your parents and, and the kind of home you grew up in. So I grew up about, it's funny, people are always asking me, <clears throat> are you from L.A.? I say, no, I'm, I'm from an hour south of here. But <laughs> it, it was nothing like L.A. And uh, I grew up on the beach in Southern California. Um, uh, my, we went to a Presbyterian church. Um, <clears throat> I, w- I played a sport called water polo. So in the mornings, mm. I would have 5.30 a.m. or 6 a.m. workouts. And our minister would always, I, he would walk from his home to church in the mornings. And I went to school with both his kids. So I knew him uh, personally. And that meant a great deal to me because I had 
accountability to him, not just because I knew his boys who were who were wild, uh, <laughs> but because uh, but because I knew him. If that if you understand what I mean, like he knew my name, and when I went into church, he saw me, mm-hmm. and that meant something to me. And right. That's why I love the Catholic Church because. In communion, you have that relationship, and I will always try to get this. I don't. This will probably shouldn't say this. I, I, my, my grandfather's from Ireland, right? So I was spent half my time in a Catholic church growing up, uh, and in those days it was still Latin. Okay. So I, I had a hard time um, connecting, but I loved being. I love. I love. Being in the church and and also where I grew up at the beach, all the kids, uh, all the Catholics could go to school on Saturday and they, they could go in the afternoon. And they went in their in their trunks, their suits, swimsuits and sandals and T-shirts. I was like and I was still wearing a tie and a blue blazer. I was like, hang on a second. I don't really <laughs> like this Catholic thing. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, but there was something that I. I love and I feel like. I, one of my good friends is a is a priest, and we have talked about it many, many times. About uh, am I allowed to have communion? And and no, frankly, I'm not. But I I cheat, and I do because. And the problem is, I know, <laughs> I know the priests uh, yeah. eye to eye. So I always feel like, oh no. But God, I feel like God is willing to let me share. Because it does something for me, like I really, yeah. and I think that I am, I, I consider myself. I don't know if you can do it. Yes, yeah. I'm bringing up so many issues because I'm curious on your thoughts about it. Right. Uh, well, you know, so anyway, I was raised down in Newport Beach. Um, went to University of Southern California. Right. Uh, played water polo there. Went on a water polo scholarship. Started doing some modeling, and because one of my girlfriends said you should try. You should do some. I didn't even know what it was. I, I, there was a Sears catalog at our house, and I f- assumed that was the guy who put on the vest, who made the vest, and they said, "Here, take it. We'll take a picture." I never really <laughs> no, looked at no. it. And uh, anyway, I ended up doing that, and then I ended doing commercials, and then I thought, "Well, that's." And I was a lifeguard at the time, and was on the uh, program to go into the body search teams. So mm-hmm. when we lost somebody uh, in a storm or had to go in somewhere and find somebody, I was uh, at scuba gear stuff. I was doing that at the time. And when I got uh, my first, well, I got in trouble at USC because I was taking pictures. I was making money during the school year. Uh-huh. And you're not allowed to do that if you're on an oh. athletic scholarship. But I didn't know that. Like, no, there were no, no one's going to tell a water polo team. They tell a football team. We don't right. tell the water polo team, you know, the rules. So anyway, <laughs> I got in trouble um, and didn't get to play my. And so I moved to New York City to try to make some money because mm-hmm. they wanted me to pay back my scholarship. Oh, and uh, so I went to New York to make some money. And while I was there, I got the TV show Happy Days with no experience, no nothing. Isn't that great? And it just and it went from, you know, kind of one show. I went from Happy Days, then to Love Boat, then to Dynasty. And, to marry and, and, children, and an endless and list. If, if, our listeners, then, if our listeners uh, and viewers shrinking. go on, if you go <laughs> online and you dig up uh, Ted McGinley, McGinley's name, you see this man has worked from the 1980s straight through to the present in film and television and voiceovers. I, I got to ask you, Ted, has there ever been, though, because most actors say they go through a period like this, has there been ever a fallow period, a dry period where you weren't working? And what does an actor do when the parts don't come? Yeah, it's it's that's a very uh, a good question. One because we all have them for sure, yeah. and um, you know, for a lot of people, they'll go into theater mm-hmm. so they keep the instruments sharp. Um, but for me, I at one period I uh, for some cartoons, which is oh. the greatest job ever, <laughs> and then I did. Um, uh, you know, I had two young boys, so yeah. I always felt like it was a great gift uh, to me because I could still feed my family because I've been a, a good saver my whole life. And uh, I've started working when I was in probably second grade and saved 
every penny I ever made for years. <clears throat> and so I was, I was really diligent about hanging on to things that I'd earned. And uh, I had two boys. Mm -hmm. So I put all my time into my wife and my two boys, and I considered it a gift. As long as I could still feed and educate my kids uh, and, and, you know, keep my wife warm. Ed, did you ever think about the possibility because uh, because of the indefiniteness of the career, you sometimes work, you're not always working. Uh, when you have a wife and you have two beautiful sons, did you ever think, OK, acting on the side, but I'll get some kind of a mainstream job in the meantime? Or did you stay with acting, the creative arts, your whole life? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. In the early days, I always thought, in fact, I was embarrassed to say I was an actor because I really wasn't one. I was just working as one. Yeah. So I was I was a little bit embarrassed uh, and thought I would go into commercial real estate where I was from. Uh, and that's kind of what I was studying. But it just kept kind of coming. And I thought, OK, this must be it. This is what I'm going to do. And so I started to work hard and study and, and do a lot. And apparently it worked because you have been working. Now, uh, Ted McGinley is our guest, and he was talking about uh, the fact that he was a married man and with children. I got to ask you, some people in the arts, many who have been a guest on our show, have talked about the fact that, no, I never settled down or I settled down once or twice, but it didn't work because of the uh, constant upheaval of the business. But you chose a long time ago in the last century to marry Gigi. And here you are in 2024 and you guys are still together. I've got to ask you, when I do weddings on weekends, Ted, I always ask the couples, write me an essay. Tell me why this is the one. Did you know back then? That Gigi was yes. the one. What was it about Gigi that made you say, I can go with this woman for life? Yeah, that's such a great question. I was, um, and coming from you, that's interesting because you, you are put in an interesting position every weekend. Um, I was doing a play. <clears throat> I'd done a movie with Burt Reynolds and he told me, uh, he said, you know, I've got a theater in Florida. And he said, I'd love for you to come down there and, and do something. And I thought, yeah, sure. He's going to, sure. He's going to call me. two <laughs> weeks later. He called a play with the great Ozzie Davis and Joe Silver, two great oh. Broadway actors. Uh, would you like to come in and do it? And I, I said, are you kidding? Yeah. I'm scared <laughs> to death, but I would, I'd love to do it. I hadn't, I'd only done one professional play at that point. Okay. And, uh, I went in. They had a. They have a. Uh, an, uh, they have a, a program there for the apprentices, and the apprentice. And they they are kids from BFA. They have their bachelor of fine arts, and they mm -hmm. will come in. And a couple sort of just ex athletes and stuff that he had in his program, and they were apprentice in his theater. They did the laundry of the people that were currently starring in the show. They built the stages. They did everything. They were amazing. And my wife, my now wife, Gigi, was right. one of the apprentice. And Bert picked me up at the airport. <clears throat> Bert Reynolds picked me up at the airport. I'll never forget it. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm on beach and I'm standing there and this white Cadillac comes by and the windows are completely blacked out. And the window comes down and goes, Shee! get in, kid. And it's Bert, you know, the big smile. Shee! And so I get in the car and he says, come on, we're going to drive to the theater. So we drive to the theater. And we're going to go watch uh, the princesses, or print I, as I say, are, are, are going to have a, a, a show that night. So as I arrive at five, and so we're, we, he had a big dining room in his own suite. So we're, it's myself, Lonnie, and Bert, and we're going to watch the apprentice show. And it's a musical. And it was phenomenal. I thought, but the first person that comes out on the screen, these legs come across the screen kicking, bam, bam. I think it was uh, something from Chicago. And I thought, who is that? And that was Gigi Rice. Uh, and the next day we started rehearsals for our new show. And I didn't want to be the creepy outsider. coming. I didn't talk to her. I didn't personally right. talk to her one-on-one -on -one for two weeks. But we would see each other come in. We were on the opposite side of the stage making entrances. So I would see her and she would always catch my eye. And we were always looking at each other. Mm -hmm. And so uh, opening night, she sent me a card and said, would you have a, a glass of champagne with me after the show? The moment forward, I just knew it. 
and we were never i mean apart after that it was wow great what what is what is great about Gigi though? What what made you say she's not just beautiful, but there are things about this woman that mean I can build a life yes. with her? Well, she's incredibly intuitive. Okay, she has she's she has this. She's one of the most generous, kind, giving, understanding people to her friends, and her family we have a son who is a uh he's a resident he's a surgical resident he's an orthopedic surgeon and he's in colorado so my wife just flew and i just took her to the airport at five this morning so she could fly in and she's gonna fly in and clean his room his apartment <laughs> because he literally works 18 okay. hours a day is yeah. two days off a month and usually he spends it sleeping and so we take turns flying in and basically cleaning his apartment and then stocking the fridge and setting him up for the next time period till we come in. But that's Great. my wife. Like that is a hundred percent GG. She is all in on her family. I, love uh, that. I could tell yeah. by how she treated her parents mm -hmm. of uh, how much family meant to her and how she treated her brother. Uh, and I just thought, okay, this is someone who understands She's like me. She was very frugal. We have very similar mm -hmm. um, feelings about, you know, not wasting things, et cetera. And, and right. uh, she just, we, we, we were in line in so many ways. But her, her beauty comes through her eyes. And when I would get close to her, I was, it was like, a, it was like I was meant to be next to her and, uh, and with her. And she's, you know, after we had kids and, you know, it's interesting when you have kids, you do things differently. Like I was raised one way. She was raised another way. And I wanted to be a little more strict, maybe a little more firm. And she was, she was much more uh, in the moment and was in that. And I, and I, I, I learned from her that probably her way was the right way. <laughs> and so we, we got on the same page and uh, a lot of it was, I always tell young guys when they're getting married, the the real, my advice to you is just say yes a lot. And uh, just always <laughs> right. say yeah. Happy and then wife, when you really happy have something life. that you yeah. don't want to do, you can put your foot down. But honestly, like generally they're, you know, my wife was right most of the time. Isn't that great? Now, listen, Ted, I hope you're going to get a copy of this show and and play it for Gigi to let her know how nice you are about her. But let's talk about the product of this beautiful marriage uh we, <laughs> that, we got, that would be great we, we got two kids so we got so think you wrote it for me yeah yeah you did great quinn and Bo. now let me ask you you and, and gigi have these wonderful values that have sustained your marriage but i'm wondering because i'm not a parent you are how do you take these two boys you love and and implant in them plant good seed and help them to be the kind of good people you hope they'll be like how do you teach values uh, especially values like loving God and loving people to these two sons of yours. How did you and Gigi do that? Well, you know, I, I always, I start off by saying we are so far from perfect close. We're, we're nothing but fallible. And, uh, I'm, you know, your kids are always learning by what you do. Mm -hmm. And so we always tried as best we could to, um, create a loving um, environment that was responsible to all people of, you know, all races, all religions. Uh, we tried to be um, understanding and kind in our home, as well as when we're out in, in the world. And we, in our business, we thought, well, let's, maybe if we, we put them in a, an Episcopalian school, uh, in our neighborhood right. and they went there from preschool to eighth grade. So the coon and everybody who went to the school sort of bought into um, the agreement on, you know, the beginnings of social media and whatnot. Like we would, we would as a parent group say, we don't want to do any texting, no social media within the class. And so that those became the rules. And then as the parents would come home and say, sorry, the school says, we're not doing that. You can't do it. And so we had a lot of 
helped. So we, that helped. I mean, that I today it's very difficult because there's no escaping the social media, which is just, I mean, it's a beautiful thing in many ways, but it's also very difficult for parenting right. and scary in, in some ways. Uh, and yet we'll be promoting our show on it. So, you know, you, you have it both ways. Uh, but what I would say the most important thing other than uh, kids watching what you do and who you are mm -hmm. is their friend group and the peers. And we were very cognizant of whose house they could stay at and yeah. whose house they should probably stay here. You know, they weren't going to hang out, but we'll hang out at our house. Uh, and, and we also, Gigi and I picked never to work at the same time. Uh, once they got to a certain age, we would, whoever got the job first <clears throat> got to go. And the other one would yeah. stay home and run the house and, and be there for our boys. So all of that matters. And then we were blessed, no, sure. really blessed to have grandparents still alive who were involved in their lives uh, okay. and great grandparents. Okay. So they knew well where they came from and, uh, and, and they, they were, they were a part of our kids' lives, our grandparents. And, and so that helps a lot as well. Grounding these kids. Act, actor Ted McGinley's our guest. Ted, I got to ask you, um, you know, yesterday I was 30 and now I'm not. Um, and I look back to when you look up Ted McGinley online, uh, he's this uh, many pictures of him as this very young, very athletic, very studly guy that people fell in love with years ago. And then the years go on. And if we're lucky enough to stay alive, we we age. I got to ask you about that. When yeah. you're in a business that so often judges people simply by their look, um, how easy or how tough is it to go through the aging process and not be bothered by it? Yeah, it, it, I, I think it's regardless of what your business is, the aging mm -hmm. process is never fun. Yeah. yeah. But I try to turn you up a little bit. But... But I, I, um, at this point, I kind of don't care that much. I mean, okay. it's, it's, uh, it's a, you know, I always feel for guys whose, whose entire, um, career is built on how you look because, yeah. uh, you have to maintain that. And when it stops being maintained, the great thing about you just become a character actor, right, which is right. everybody's dream anyway. So, <laughs> um, if you can wrap your head around the idea that you're now going to be a character actor instead of a leading man, which by the way, if you're not, once you get to be an old guy, you're not going to get the girl anymore. Anyway, no one right. wants to watch you make out. So you might as well be the character. <laughs> actor. It's a lot more fun. Ted McGinley's our guest. Ted, um, one of the things that uh, is striking to me about uh, you and, and your work is that um, you really are part of a business that is a, uh, not crazy about the uh, spiritual necessarily or the religious. Um, it's a very highly secularized yeah, yeah. business. So you've talked early in the program about the fact that you've done a number of spiritual films. And I'm just wondering, when you're a Christian in Hollywood, uh, is, is it hard to be a Christian in Hollywood? Or do you find great acceptance that people respect who you are? They know you're a believer and they don't hold it against you. No, I don't. That's not the case. Okay. For sure. Uh, it's, you know, it's when you, once you stand up and be counted, uh, it's, it's hard for a lot of folks, I think. Mm. And, um, yeah, I just feel like it's one of the things you have to do. And okay. I don't, I'm not a guy. I'm not a, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm very private about my faith. I'm not someone who beats people over the head with it. Right. Uh, and I know that that's important for a lot of people and, and, mm. Um, and uh, there are a lot of different groups that believe that you need to be witnessing all the time. And I, I always feel like ways to approach different kinds of people when you're not going to ever capture someone like me yeah. doing that. And so the people who are like me are going to respond to how I go about it mm -hmm. and, and how I get my message across. And, and really it's just by trying to, to, um, if someone comes to me and wants to talk about it, uh, I I will talk about my faith. Right. But in general, at work, I just try to only live up to what I am 
capable of, and I'm so highly flawed, uh, but I'm lucky enough to live under the banner of, of under God's banner. Yeah. And um, I, I, so that's all I try to strive for. And then if someone is close enough and is interested, I'm there. And in other words, right. um, I just try to do what I, and uh, I do think it's very difficult. You can get pigeonholed quickly as, oh, you're one of, we don't want you in. You're one of those guys. We don't want you in. You know, you can't play with right, us. Right, right. So yeah, it's a, it's, it takes a little bit of courage. To be honest, Ted McGinley's our guest. And one of the things I love about something you did give in a, a speech once or an interview, Ted said, uh, talking about the cross, uh, it means forgiveness. It means everlasting life. I believe it is the way and it is the truth. And uh, and so Ted is saying is he's, yeah. if you ask him, he's not shy about saying who he is and what he believes, but also not to be preaching to people so much. I promise final question, Ted, and then I'm going to let you go on with your day. But one of the first interviews I ever did was with the. Okay, let me just say thank you. Sorry, I gotta say no. Thank that's you okay. very much for letting me come on here. You're so well thought of, and uh, it's a real privilege. And you really did some nice homework, and it's very nice. <laughs> that 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 quote is from "Do You Believe," which is a movie that I'm very proud of. Um, and uh, the great John Gung wrote and directed that, or directed. It, and he's He's done a lot of stuff for Pure Flix, but he's a great friend and a good guy. Uh, so anyway, I just want no, to say thank no, you. No, no, no. Thank you. Go ahead. Ted ask McGinley. me that last question. I thank you so much for uh, for being on our program. And Ted, you're a wonderful actor, but I wanted our listeners and viewers around the world, obviously, I want them to watch the Baxters, Baxters and be aware of your career as an actor. But I just wanted them to know a man who uh, loves his wife, loves his kids, tries to live good values, admits right up front that he's not perfect, like no one is perfect, and just tries to be uh, uh, very, very clear about the fact that he belongs to God. Uh, he doesn't uh, shove it in people's face. But you're a wonderful man, Ted, and it's just been great to have you on the program. And thank you for your witness. Thanks for your well, career. And tell Gigi she should listen to our show so she can hear all the wonderful things her husband said about her. Ted McGinley, thank you for being on our program. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye now. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You take care. God bless. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. I want to thank you for being with us and personally speaking. If you need to reach me for any reason, you can write me at personally speaking podcast at gmail.com. You probably listen to this program on the Catholic Channel, Channel 129. You can also watch us on YouTube at personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be with you again next time on Personally Speaking.